Good morning everyone. Our chapel this morning is a very topical one. Today is the 25th of January. Tonight is Burns Night and throughout Scotland and across the world Scots will, where they can, come together and celebrate the anniversary of the birth of Robert Burns, the man heralded as the national poet of Scotland. Burns was born into a very simple farming family in the mid part of the 1700s, the 18th century. Life was hard for his family. Uh, he had to work long hours on his father's farm, but he was lucky to be taught by his father, who taught him a range of different subjects and even allowed him to go off to Mr Murdoch to be taught Latin and French and maths. I don't think our Mr Murdoch, but nonetheless, it was him who interested him in wider ideas. Burns um, started writing when he was a young man, partly because of his interest in words and folk songs and other things, but partly also to raise some money. He was already married as a young man, but had decided that he couldn't afford to live off his current means working as a farmer, and so had accepted a job in Jamaica in the West Indies, and to raise the money to sail out to Jamaica, he tried selling some of his poems. They were successful, and as a result, he was persuaded to stay in Scotland and to make a life as a poet. Now, there wasn't a lot of money to be made in poetry, and he became as well what's called a customs or excise man, someone who raised taxes for goods that were brought into the country. But alongside that, he became prolific, writing um, hundreds and indeed almost thousands of poems, songs, gathering together old Scottish songs, writing in a Scottish dialect. He also had very strong political views, writing perhaps in more formal English. He approved of the French Revolution, the American Revolution, and became quite a controversial figure. Life remained hard for Burns, and as a result of the, har the, the hardness of his life, he died a young man, only, only aged 37. But in that time, he had written lots. He'd loved lots of women. He was famous for the many different women he loved and wrote about. And he wrote enough work to influence subsequent writers like Wordsworth and Coleridge, but also more recently, people like J.D. Salinger and Bob Dylan. He is therefore celebrated across the world as Scotland's national poet, voted the most famous Scot of all time. And the poem that we're going to give you this morning is perhaps one of his most famous and was voted by BBC Scotland as the most famous Scottish poem of all time. I give you the story of a ne'er drunk ne'er do well and his encounter on a lonely ride home with a haunted church. Tam O'Shanter. When Chapman Billy's leave the street, the druthy neighbours, neighbours meet, as market days are wearing late, and folk begin to take the gate. While we sit boozing at the nappy And getting foo and unco happy We think now on the long scut's miles The moose's water slaps and styles That lie between us and our home Where sits our sulky sullen dame Gathering her brews like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm, this truth found honest Tam O'Shanter, as he from air a night did canter. Ah, oh, Tam, hadst thou but been so wise as tain thy ain wife Kate's advice. She told thee, Weel, thou was a skill, a blathering, blustering, drunken blellum. 
that pre November till October, I market day thou wasn't sober. She prophesied that late or soon thou would be found droon in doom, or catch it we warlocks in the muck by Alloway's old haunted cuck. Ah, gentle dames, it gars me greet to think how mony consuls sweet, how mony lengthened sage advices the husband free the wife despises. But to our tale a market night, Tam had got planted on right, fast by an ingle bleasingly fine, with reaming swats that drank divinely. Care, mad to see a man say happy, in drowned himself among the nappy, as bees flee hame with ladies of treasure, the minutes winged their way with pleasure. Kings may be blessed, but Tam was glorious, or oh, are the hills of life victorious. But pleasures are like poppy spread. You seize the flower, its bloom is shed. Or like the snow falls in the river, a moment white, then melts forever. Or like the borealis race, that flit ye you can point their place. Or like the rainbow's lovely form, it vanishing amid the storm. Nay man can tether time the tide, the other approaches tam and ride. That hour on ice black oak the key stain, that dreary hour he must has beast in. And sick a night he tacks a roar in, and near poor sinner was abroad in. The wind blew as, twad blown its last, the rattling showers rose on the blast. The speedy gleams of darkness swallowed, loud, deep and lang, the thunder bellowed. A night a child might understand the deal had business on his hand. Well mounted on his grey mare Meg, a better never lifted a leg, Tam Skelp put on through dub and mire, despising wind and rain and fire. Whilst holding on his git blue bonnet, whilst crooning over some old Scots sonnet, while glowering round with prudent cares, lest bogles catch him on wares. Kirkalloway was drawing near, where gusts and hullets nightly cry. Before in doom pours all his flood, the dabbling storms roll through the woods. The lightning flash from pole to pole, nearer and more nearer the saunders roll, when, glimmering through the groaning trees, Kirk Halloway seemed in a blaze. Through Ilka, both the beams were glancing, and loud resounded mirth and dancing, inspiring bold John Balacon. What danger so can makes us scorn? We tippany, we fair not evil, we ask we will face the devil. The sweat so rimmed in Tammy's noddle. Fair play, he called not Dale's a bottle. But Maggie stood right there astonished, till by the heel and hand admonished. She ventured forward on the light and vow Tam so an unco sight. Warlocks and witches in a dance, ne cotillon, brent new frae France. But hornpipes, jigs, brass sprays and reels, put life and metal in their heels. A winnock bunker in the east, there sat old Nick, in shape a beast. A towsy type, black grim and large, to give them music was his charge. He screwed the pipes and got them skirl, till roof and rafter added dirl. Coffins stood round like open presses that shored the dead in their last dresses. And by some devilish cantrap slight, each in its cold hand held a light, by which heroic Tam was able to note upon the haley table a murderous banes in gibbet urns, twa spran lang we unchristened bairns. As Tammy glowed, amazed and curious, the mirth and fun grew fast and furious. The piper loud and louder blew, the dancers quick and quicker flew. They reeled, they set, they crossed, they cleeked it. Tilka Khan swat and reek it, and coosed her duddies to the walk, and link it at her in her sock. Now, Tam, oh Tam, had they been queens, 
all plump and strapping in their teens. Their sarks, instead of creasy flannin, being snow white seventeen hundred linen. Their breeks o' mine, my only pair, that once were plush a good blue hair. Away had gain them off my hurdies for a blink at the bonny birdies. But Tam, ken what was what through Bolly? There was I winsome, wench and wally. Her cutty sarco paisley hand, that while a lassie she had worn, in longitude thou sorely scanty, it was her best, and she was vaunty. Ah, a little ken thy reverend granny, that sark she coughed for her wee nanny, wee tear twa pun Scots, twas her riches, whatever graced a dance of witches. And how Tam stood like an bewitched, and thought his very yin enriched. Even Satan glowered and fidged to fain, and hotched and blew in might and main, till first I caper, sign in ever, Tam tent his reason, ah, together and roars out, Well done, Cutty Sark! And in an instant all was dark, and scarcely had he Maggie rallied when out the hellish legion sallied. As bees bees out with angry fike, when plundering hordes assail their bike, as open pusses mortal foes, when pop she starts before their nose, as eager runs the market crowd, when catch the thief resounds aloud. So Maggie runs the witches fall, with money and eldritch screech and holler. Ah, Tam, ah, Tam, thou get thy fair in. In hell they'll roast thee like a heron. In vain thy Kate awaits thy coming. Kate soon will be a woeful woman. Now do thy speedy utmost, Meg, and win the key stain o'er the brig. Thereat them thou thy tail may toss, a running stream they dare na cross. But ere the key stain she could make, the fine to tail she had to shake, for nanny far before the rest, hard upon noble Maggie pressed, and flew at Tam with furious ettle, but little wist she Maggie's mettle. I spring brought off her master hail, but left behind her angry tail. The carlin clot her by the rump, and left Poor Maggie scarce a stump. Now why this tale of truth shall read, Ilk man and mother's son take heed. When e'er to drink you are inclined, Or cutty socks run in your mind, Think you may buy your joys or dear. Remember Tam O'Shanter's mare. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we approach Burns Night, we give thanks for the memory of our national poet. May his memory help many Scots feel closer together tonight, wherever they are in the world. And even though they cannot be in each other's houses, we look forward to a time where we can all be together again. And in the meanwhile, we give thanks for our good fortune in these difficult times. As Burns said, some hay meat and can he eat, and some way meat that want it. But we hay meat and we can eat, so let the Lord be found fit. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>